Are you sure there's not an actual turbine in there? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Life of a Sneakerhead. This is a special episode. It's gonna be all about Air Jordans. And some of you guys may know the Air Jordan line is one of the most famous shoe lines ever made. And today we're gonna go through one through 29. So whether you know a lot about Jordans or you don't know anything at all, hopefully you find something useful. Let's go. The, the Air, Air Jordan, Jordan 1. In 1985, Nike took a chance and gave a rookie named Michael Jordan his own signature shoe. They got banned from the NBA because they didn't have enough white color in them. He was in the dunk contest wearing a gold chain in them. They really just started this whole new marketing campaign around Michael Jordan that was way more urban than anybody had seen before in the NBA. I mean, they're my favorite Jordan. Oh! All right, Richie, where do these rank in the sneakerhead hierarchy? Since they don't have really a lot of technology, they're not really flashy. They're pretty up there, but I'd say like maybe third or fourth. So these are the original colorways, and I would definitely say that sneakerheads generally value these a lot higher than, for example, the new colorways. This is a Air Jordan 1, and this is a Nike Air Dunk. You can see there's like a vertical drop, and then mm -hmm. it slopes where this is just a linear slope. Mm -hmm. The dunks look more like triangles, while these look more like boots. Air Jordan 2s. So Jordan had an amazing rookie year. This is his second season, but unfortunately he broke his foot, so he barely got to wear these. And that's one of the reasons why this shoe is not that popular now. I feel like the 2s might make the comeback. They fit that like new, old, luxurious retro look. Air Jordan 3s. A lot of people in the world that are into sneakers have the Air Jordan 3 in their top three of all. Got this true, man. This is the first Air Jordan with a visible air unit. I think it's the first shoe to introduce elephant print. I actually really like the shape. It's shape. like a really short triangle. Mm -hmm. You gotta go to an event. No one's gonna be mad at you if you wear these. You nah. dress them up, you could dress them down. down. Big guys could pull off the yes. oh, You're right. Man. I like them, but I understand that they look maybe more fitting for a bigger dude. He came back and averaged 37 points this season. Mm. That means he's Bruh. dropping 40 points like almost every other night. Shout out to Jordan, man. Yo, this is Mars Blackman, and this is my main man, Michael Jordan. Air Jordan 4. The Jordan 4 is a lot more wearable and durable. This is made out of hard plastic. It's tight though, and these are the first Jordans I think that have herringbone traction. On certain versions, they got the mesh here, and then on certain versions, they got the leather, like David's rocking right, the I new know. color with the Oreos. I mean, this also got the visible air unit. I love the breads, black and red because of the suede. If you're only gonna buy one Jordan shoe, this black and red okay. Jordan 4. That's what you said. But I would say the only thing you gotta watch for is the midsole cracking. Yeah. yeah. Air Jordan 5. All right, these are the first Jordans to have clear soles. He dropped 69 in them. They what came with lace locks, which was Ooh. a cool addition. You know, at the time, no one had lace locks. No one knows how to wear lace locks nowadays, I feel like. They're hey, like, hey, what do I do with them? Rich, am I wearing them right? Oh, um, you know, there's no rule, I guess. Yep. His tongue is real fatty. Shark mm -hmm. teeth right here. Mm -hmm. That's based off of a fighter plane from the 1940s. Woo! I feel like they're pretty artsy. This is like the, to me, this is like the artsy shoe. Just because it has the shark teeth right here. Like, I love this part. I noticed when a lot of the streetwear artists paint Jordans, they oftentimes paint the five. What fives are these? Fresh, Fresh Prince, Prince in West, West Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Born and raised on the playground is where I spend most of my days. Air Jordan 6. Michael Jordan requested that this back tab curve out because the on the fours it was hitting his, uh, his oh. ankle and stuff. I feel like Kanye kind of made these a little more popular with the mm. infrared sixes. I would definitely say this is, you're starting to move out of what's considered the menswear Jordan. It looks rugged, not as smooth. Air Jordan 7. This is of the classic pairs of Jordan, but it's not super popular. Everybody was having air bubbles, you had the clear sole, and then boom, no air bubble, no clear sole, kind of clunky looking. Air Jordan 8. There's a lot of stuff going on in this shoe. It looks very brolic Woo! and strong. This yeah. looks like an elephant's foot, like just oh, real like, yeah, yeah. you won't twist your ankle in these. This is the first one with the cross strap. I like the tongue and I like these suede grooves back here. Oh. That's something new. In the 99s, the 2000s, that's when people said the retros were the best quality. So, so even if you get the same shoe, but it's a different issue edition, mm -hmm. the quality and everything could just ruin the whole vibe. They, they don't, don't make them like they, they used to. to. Air Jordan 9. Kind of a lower ranked Jordan. Largely because they came out after Jordan mm. retired to go play minor league baseball. And they were actually, oh. the design was actually even based off a baseball, baseball cleat, cleat, right? You know what a lot of people do with these olives? They don't like the olive part, so they actually take a uh, permanent marker and they just mark this whole part black and it just looks like a bread colorway. One of the original shoe videos, I said that this was Chinese. And it is Chinese, but it's actually Japanese Chinese. Air Jordan 10. One thing you guys gotta know is at one point, Jordans did not sell out. Jordan was still retired when these came out, so that's why on the bottom, it had all his accomplishments throughout the years. They knew Jordan wasn't gonna play in them, so they did not care about the traction at all. The Seattle 10s, they never retro those. 
Those go for a lot. Air Jordan 11s. First of all, these are. This is not the black and white colorway. This is the Concord. Mm. Call it by what it is. This is the black and red colorway, AKA the Breads. Mm. Here we have the ultimate Space Jam 11s. You can wear these to weddings, first of all. This is the first time that you really had a large amount of patent leather. You got the ballistic upper. Is this the first shoe from Jordan that used carbon fiber? Yeah, the carbon fiber shank plate. This yeah. is the first okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. This is the first one. You know why this shoe is a big deal? Because Jordan came back and won a championship in these. Oh. And you had the movie Space Jams, which obviously the Space Jams are from. I feel like there was so much hype, and this is when media was finally at that point where TVs, movies, all that, commercials uh -huh. was on that level. For basketball, probably the Space Jams are the best though because you can't really get them messed up. Mm -hmm. no. They have full length encapsulated Ooh. air. I almost want to get a pair just for nostalgic reasons. I actually don't own a pair. Air, air Jordan, Jordan 12s. 12s. These were actually based off the Japanese flag. The key is that you can wear this in the snow. <laughs> you can wear this in the rain. This is an extremely durable Jordan. Mm. Look how thick the rubber sole is on this. This is the first Jordan with full length zoom air. Jordan had these when he had the stomach flu. In the playoffs, he dropped 38 points. Here's an emoji with the tongue. And on he pretty much collapsed right oh, after the game on pivot. It was holding yeah. right? Yeah. As simple as the shoe is, it looks very unique. I think the bottom is kind of slept on too, right here. You got the carbon fiber. This is a good shoe, but it's also a hood, hood shoe. shoe. Air, Air Jordan 13. 13. This is one of the coolest soles. It got the panther paw. Hologram on the bottom. Hologram on the side. This is supposed to represent a panther's eye. This is actually a really good performance basketball shoe. You know what? It goes to show you that number 13 is not always an unlucky number. Air, Air Jordan 14. This logo right here was inspired by the Ferrari logo. Oh. All right, and they even got the air vent on the side. Oh my like the goodness. Car. I didn't even notice this until uh, just uh. now. Are you sure there's not an actual turbine in there? These are called the last shots. Because you know yeah. that one, Utah, you know, the push off hey, hey, against Byron. I'll do, do it, it, I'll do it. The push off against Byron Russell just, and then Jordan just held it. Air Jordan 15. Now some people would say this was the decline of Jordans. This tongue thing, it was inspired by a NASA space jet. I like them conceptually. I think they actually look better now in 2015 with the cultural context nowadays than they did when they came out in 2000. Mm -hmm. Air Jordan 16. And this shroud, I heard cost so much to make. I like it with the shroud, actually. I like it without the shroud. I think one of the coolest things about this is the traction on the bottom. You have the clear sole, and then you got these little funny matrix like shapes. This is one of the few shoes who had visible zoom there. They kind of did away with that. Very few shoes have that. Air Jordan 17s. I'd say marketing for these jumped up to the next level with the metal case that it came Ooh. in. Came with a CD-ROM. These were $200. With the, the Jordan 17 low is actually better looking than the 17 mid, and that's one of the few Jordans where the low is way cooler looking. The track is you got incredible. The carbon fiber under here. Air, Air Jordan, Jordan 18. 18. Now, a lot of people said that the Jordans fell off after 14, but one thing they were able to accomplish was make all the Jordans look very luxurious oh. and classy. So they gave you the brush. Damn. See, Jordan was trying to, uh, what, uh, advance people's ideas of no, basketball shoes. Sort of change their whole lifestyle. Uh -huh. Right. He said, yo, I'm going to give you this brush, so brush your suede. Air, Air Jordan, Jordan 19. 19. Interesting technology. They use this weaving pattern uh, as a shroud. They didn't want you to tie these shoes so you have a strap here in the back that you tighten and then you have this these drawstring laces <laughs> So, AKA the fly swatter. I heard that this was originally based off the scales of a snake. Air, Air Jordan 20. 20. I like these cause you know, they have something unique to them. They have that laser print that they started to use. These were based off of bicycling shoes. Okay, not some, you know, luxury car. That's why they have the ankle strap up here, which is pretty oh. interesting. Not a lot of shoes do these. I could definitely see the designer giving up on this being a lifestyle shoe and trying to move towards the extreme performance at this point. Air, Air Jordan, Jordan 21. 21. I would definitely say the Jordan 21 is one of the Jordans that a lot of people do not care about. Nope. The traction was crazy. Kind of had the DNA double helix um, type thing going on. A forgettable shoe. Air, Air Jordan, Jordan 22. 22. The whole part right here is so shiny. And then these actually you could remove the cushioning as well on the oh, inside. Look at this tongue. Okay, got yeah. the quilted. Literally, these shoes are made out of basketball leather. <laughs> this oh. is pure cushioning right here. <laughs> This is the zoom unit. Why is it removable? So that you can put different types of cushioning in it. Put the zoom back, man. Air Jordan 23s. These were rumored to be the last Air Jordan signature shoe. This part right here is supposed to mimic Jordan's actual DNA strands. So you could copy that and then clone Jordan. And then you know what else they did? They put right here behind, it's his thumbprint. Oh. No! Yeah. Yo, so this is the ultimate Yo, these Jordan is shoe. Like, so these is almost like the Air Genomes. I feel like they brought back the, you know, the uniqueness of 
inspiration of Jordan no. into the shoes. Real quick, what happened after the 23s is that Jordan brand thought that they were gonna stop making numbered Jordans because they didn't wanna make Jordan 24, they wanted to end on 23 because that's his number. What they ended up doing was made a line of about four shoes after that <laughs> that were not very good and they were called Jordan 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012 by the year. So we're actually missing the 2011 and 2012, but to be honest, here they are, you're not missing much. What we have is the 2009 and the 2010. So after all that craziness with the Jordan 2009 to 2012, they kind of made a return. Now Jordan is trying to return to its status as the number one performance shoot in the entire basketball mm. game. The Air, Air Jordan, Jordan 28 and the Air, Air Jordan, Jordan 29. 29. Yo, this looks like human flesh. <laughs> there was an SE version without the shroud. Yeah, yeah. No, now these are really good basketball shoes. My question was, why did they make the shroud so tall? So this is called Unlock Zoom Air. That means the Zoom Air actually juts out from the bottom of the shoe. It's ultra responsive. The only problem is these Zoom units actually pop because of like, they're like two pack with Zoom Air. But otherwise, these were the best basketball shoes that year. Somehow, the Air Jordan 29s, a lot of people said were better than the 28s. I've seen a lot of people with these. This looks like really fresh water. They're really comfortable, they're really stable. Everybody says the traction's crazy. This is a one knit upper. First of all, I'm just glad that Jordan's back to the numerals. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, they're back to their commitment to creating mm -hmm. brand new technologies that push the basketball shoe game forward. In such a short video, we weren't able to get into every single detail of every single Jordan. There's stuff we left out. Make sure you let us know what we left out in the comments section below or other stuff you'd like us to talk about. And absolutely, are there questions of consumerism and materialism that yeah. should be answered? We know. At some point, we know, but those <laughs> are discussions for Another video. Another video. There are tons of colorways of every Jordan that we didn't get to show, yeah. but the main point of this video was Jordans, there is a reason why it is the most popular shoe line ever created in the entire world. From kids in China, to India, to Antarctica, to America, they love Jordans. Jordans, bringing the whole world together one shoe at a time. Everybody, thank you for watching that video about the Jordans 1 through 29. Like if you can afford it and you think that they're cool, it's nice to get a pair. Guys, watch this video right here. Watch this video right here. Subscribe to our channel. Check out Richie's channel. He got a lot of sneaker content on there. For show. And until next time, make sure you let us know what else you want us to talk about. We out. Peace.